I'm teaching a class on 3D animation this semester, and that class involves using Blender to do rigging of basic characters and do basic animation, 12 principles, all the 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 pipeline, and all of that exciting type of stuff that we do as as we're teaching. So this very first tutorial, we're going to go over how to do one aspect of rigging for doing a basic squash stretch for a ball bounce. And then we'll get into some more complex ones in future ones. So I got Blender open. We'll go to general. Let's get rid of our cube. That's now all gone. And let's add a sphere. And we'll go ahead and lift the sphere up so that it's not in the floor. But it's always nice to have a plane under the sphere so that we can get a good idea of where things are located. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. There we go. And now we got something for that sphere to bounce off of. Now, personally, I like to see some texture on my objects, so I'm going to go ahead over and turn turn on the viewport shading and let's go over here to shading we're going to add a new oh well hold on I want my sphere selected there we go and I want to add a new material or texture to my sphere so I've got the sphere selected I'm going to tell it I want a new texture and let's go to add texture and I'm going to select the checker pattern and let's make it a red and white because that's fun. And we'll go over here to color, connect that to base color. Now it'd be nice if we had a little bit more control of the scaling here. So I'm going to go ahead and add another node for input and select the texture coordinate and say UV to the vector. And now you can easily control the scale with the scale control down here at the bottom of your checker texture. So we've got a nice checker to that. A number of my students like to go in and do the same thing with the plane so that it's a little bit more interesting. So we could add another texture for that. So we'll go over here to add texture and maybe the brick texture for that and output our base color. And now we've got uh, something a little bit more interesting for the ball to bounce off of. Okay, let's jump back here to our layout. We've now got a basic sphere inside of our environment, and we can start doing some scaling. Now, one of the, there's four basic ways to do rigging for any object. Inside of this type of situation, I want to go ahead and simplify the sphere and I'm just going to put a constraint on the sphere. So I'm going to jump over here to my control panel and go to object constraint properties with the sphere selected and we can rename this if if you're not happy with calling it a sphere and we're going to tell it to maintain volume. One of the key things when you're doing a squash stretch animation is that the volume needs to stay consistent. Um, let's change for a Y view on my environment here and we'll rotate that just a little bit. And I want to maintain the volume on my sphere on the Z axis. The Z axis is our up down axis. If you want to be able to see those more easily, you could go over here to your object properties, your viewport display, turn on the name axis and I like to have in front on as well. So now you can see that these are all clearly labeled Z axis for up and down X and Y. Y is usually for depth and since this is going to be more of a 2D type situation um, we'll, we'll go ahead and locate it there. Now if you wanted to lock your transforms so that it can only move up and down we can lock that so only the Z can now be changed as the ball moves up and down. And for the rotation, I want it to be able to rotate and spin along, I think the Y axis is what we're going to want. Yes. As you can see here, I'm changing just the Y axis. I press the R key for the rotate. So that works great. So we could go ahead and lock the rotation on the 
x and z axis so that those don't change on us. Okay, so we've got a basic sphere here. Uh, we've locked our controls, we've got everything showing, and we've got a constraint put on this so that our volume stays the same as we do a squash stretch to the sphere. Isn't that lovely? Things are moving right along. So we're ready to do some basic animation now. So I'm going to pull up my playback here. And we've got the timeline open. And now let's oh, let's go ahead and set that back to 1. There we go. And I'm going to, while I could go ahead and do everything with key controls or uh, using the keyboard on this, I'm going to use the transform controls up here just for so that it's more visually represented to you. Uh, of course, you could use the R, G, and S key for scaling and movement and rotation, so that would be fine. Let's set up a basic animation. I want this to be 24 frames, which if we've got our output set, frame rate is currently set at 24 frames per second. So that, that works perfect. Um, I am going to want to output this as a MPG or MP4 video. So I'll go ahead and select that. So, and where do you want this to be output when we do create our movie? I'm going to tell it to put it on my desktop so that I can find it nice and easy when we're done. Okay, so we've got that set. Now we've got 24 frames to work with. Usually when we drop a ball, it's going to, we're going to use the first 10 or 11 frames for it falling and then it's going to be starting to make the impact with the the ground. So, whoops, that's a little lower than I wanted. Let's make that back to one. So now it's just resting upon the plane inside the environment. Um, as we hit 11, let's go ahead and set a keyframe for that by pressing the I key, and I'll select the location, rotation, and scale for the object. So now we have a keyframe for this. You can see all the sphere actions information and object transforms here. And I want to then scroll over to frame 11. And I'm going to do this very manually. I know there's more controls for, for using the, the object and, and being able to do it. But I want to show this as a first project. So I want to squash this a little bit. And let's move it down a little so that it's just touching the ground and then we'll set another keyframe now you could go ahead and turn on auto keyframing which makes life a little bit easier since I didn't have auto keyframing on I do need to go ahead and create another keyframe so I'll hit the I key again location rotation there we go and I'm going to go over here to frame 12 now it'll auto key for anything I, I make uh, again, I'm going to bring this down just a little bit more and squash it a little bit more so that it looks like it's just touching the ground. There we go. And then 13, we, let's jump over here to 14. It's going to start coming back up out of the squash. We'll lift it back up and it could start even leaving the ground a little bit there at 14. Let's go over here to 16, and we'll turn it back into a start stretching it out as it's rebounding off of hitting the ground, and up a little bit, and then how high do we want it to go? So I'll jump over here to 23, go on up here a little higher, and return this back to a scale of 1, so it's recovered from its jump. Okay, so there's our basic and now we need to set our launch point so let's jump over here to one and again change my z so that it is dropping from the sky and now we can scrub through and we've got a basic squash stretch inside of our environment there we go now that we've got this set we can go ahead and change our output information. We could change it by the resolution or adjust it by the 
what we want it to output. I like for, especially for class turn-ins and things like that, I like to bring it on down to uh, 1080 by 720 because it's a little bit smaller that way and doesn't take up quite the file size. So there we go. Let's go over here to our renderer and we'll render the animation. There we go. And we might want to adjust the camera a little bit so that that looks better. So let's do that. Jump over here to our camera, rotate it. Yeah, X axis, bring that up a little bit. There we go. And now we should be set to go. So it's all rendered. And I've now got a movie file. There we go. So quick and dirty squash stretch using just constraints. Now we're going to get into empties and armatures and, and doing drivers and all that cool stuff as we move along in this uh, course. But this is a very basic introduction to how to do rigging for uh, doing basic animation. So hopefully you found that useful. If you like this, you want to see more on this, tell me in the comments below and give me a like and subscribe. Thanks.